Mr. Speaker, with your permission, I rise in support of the motion before this Honorable House. And that motion is the estimate of expenditure and revenue 2023-24 in the amount of $1.8 billion, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, before I speak on the issue before us, I seek your permission, Mr. Speaker, to recognize and to thank the people of my constituency of Soufre for Shejad for the privilege afforded me to represent them. It is a responsibility that I take very seriously and pledge to do my best to serve with empathy and integrity. Mr. Speaker, I also want to take this moment to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for affording me the opportunity to serve in his cabinet. I'm also grateful to my cabinet colleagues and the staff of my ministry for their support throughout the year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand here today in addition to supporting the motion before us to present to the people on behalf of uh, the people that we represent, my report and performance at the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs. Mr. Speaker, we've been asked as a government to be accountable. And the work of my ministry was included in the last estimate, which is for the year 2022-23. And I will also speak on the work program for 2023-24. Mr. Speaker, as I am I'm back on this very pertinent exercise, I am very optimistic, notwithstanding the myriad of challenges which we encountered over the past year, in particular, as a result of the adverse impact of extended shocks and geopolitical forces which acted on our economy, in conjunction with our own domestic resource constraints. Foremost, Mr. Speaker, is the wave of price increases from across the globe, which I described last year as the elephant in the room. As we now know too well, Mr. Speaker, this elephant in the room of rising inflation dealt a debilitating blow to our businesses and consumers alike. As a highly open an import-dependent economy, Mr. Speaker. These global price imp impulses ripple through the domestic economy in a form of cost, cost push or import inflation, reflected in increases in the consumer price index and in all sub-indices causing accelerated inflation in the country. This trend of rising prices, Mr. Speaker, pose major challenges to us in the government, and especially for our private sector, which face systemic delays and freight and other logistical challenges, which together resulted in higher costs for inputs and finished products. As a consequence, Mr. Speaker, we have all had to face higher prices for goods and services, which effectively reduced our purchasing power, our level of consumption, and ultimately our standard of living. Mr. Speaker, this was particularly painful for the more vulnerable segments of our economy, of our society, as they were forced to make very difficult choices between basic food commodities and other necessities for survival. So, Mr. Speaker, in the face of this harsh reality, what did our government do? 
Mr. Speaker, we may recall significant pushback as we had shortages in sugar. But more than anything else, what I want to speak about, Mr. Speaker, are the actions that our Prime Minister, as the Minister for Finance, took to support the vulnerable. And I will speak to that in a lot more details when I speak about some of the activities in my ministry. So, Mr. Speaker, as I look at the estimate of expenditure before us, I note that my ministry on the head 42 has been given an allocation of $19.9 million, Mr. Speaker, for this fiscal year. With $9.4 million allocated to small projects and the remaining $10.5 million being programmed to cover recurrent expenditure. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Commerce has about four main departments. Commerce and Industry, which includes SEDU, Consumer Affairs, the Cooperatives Department, and we have the Import Monitoring, Mr. Speaker. The projects that we are looking at, Mr. Speaker, and we have the Love St. Lucia campaign, which has an allocation of $100,000, we have our flagship project, which is the MSME Loan Grant Facility of $8.3 million. We have our Young Entrepreneurs in Action with some $65,000. We have the Digital Enhancement Program with $136,190. We have a Control Substance Regulatory Authority that most of us would associate with cannabis, Mr. Speaker, and we have $500,000. We have the retrofitting of the Denry uh, Fishers Cooperative, the Supra Fishers Cooperatives, and that is with a total of $275,000. And we have an allocation of $57,900 for the purchase of equipment for the, for the ministry, Mr. Speaker. I would say a very lean budget, but Mr. Speaker, with great potential outreach. Mr. Speaker, the allocation also covers two of our specialized agencies within our remit of the ministry, and that is Export St. Lucia and the Bureau of Standards with allocations of 1.96 million and 981 million respectively. Mr. Speaker, we are very grateful for this allocation, and we will do our best to utilize the limited resources available to us to implement our program of works over the coming year in as judicious and impactful a manner as possible. Against this backdrop, Mr. Speaker, permit me to present to you in greater detail some of the highlights of our 2022-23 fiscal year on the various programs and initiatives which we have focused on, albeit in some reform. I would also give an indication of what is planned for the fiscal year 2023-2024. On the commerce and industry, Mr. Speaker, we have an allocation of 10.37 million of this amount 2.9 million will be put towards operating expenses, and the remaining 7.47 million towards the financing of the various capital projects being undertaken by the two units. In particular, Mr. Speaker, uh, SEDU, which is more commonly known as the Small Business Development Center, is a department responsible for the nurturing of our micro, small, medium enterprises providing hand-holding support from business concept to completion. In the coming financial year, our flagship project 
is the much anticipated MSME lo loan grant facility. Mr. Speaker, you may recall in my address to this Honorable House last year, I alluded to the very real challenge of limited access to finances faced by our MSMEs. This challenge, Mr. Speaker, has served as a near insurmountable barrier to the launch of many small businesses, even those with viable business ideas. In response, Mr. Speaker, I announced that we would launch a loan grant facility to assist the MSMEs. Although we encountered significant delays in bringing this initiative to fruition in the current fiscal year, I am pleased to inform our small businesses, many of whom have waited patiently for their cries to be heard, that I'm happy to be bearers of the good news today that the MSME Loan Grant Facility was launched on March 16th this year. And our doors at the Ministry are now open from March 20th, Mr. Speaker, to receive applications. Mr. Speaker, this facility will provide us with the means to fuel the growth of these small enterprises in need of financial support to expand the businesses. Through the purchase of inputs and equipment or the acquisition of training and marketing services. Mr. Speaker, this is all part of our effort as we promise to restore St. Lucia to a level of stability by creating an enabling environment for wealth creation and employment and by providing much needed support to the backbone of our economy, our small businesses. Towards this end, Mr. Speaker, the sum of EC 8.3 million, which is a CDB loan fund, has been allocated in the budget in the fiscal year. The persons who are going to qualify, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker should be between the ages of 31 years and 60 years and they can receive capital through a blend of grant funding, which is 70%, and 30% concession, concessionary loans, Mr. Speaker, with a minimum, with an interest rate of 3%. Mr. Speaker, I believe the average person would say, who can beat that? All classes of businesses tend to benefit Pre-ventures, and that is persons who want to start a business or businesses already in existence. This initiative, Mr. Speaker, we are hoping to cover some 500 MSMEs. I want to pause here to echo the sentiment of the Honorable Prime Minister at the launch of this program and encourage businesses to use this opportunity to build wealth. And I remember the Prime Minister quoted, a life of luxury sounds nice, but generational wealth sounds better. Build something that outlives you. So Mr. Speaker, in order to prepare our entrepreneurs adequately to reap the full benefit available under that program, we have taken some initiatives, namely, one, the Entrepreneurial Development Program, Mr. Speaker, and that is, again, through SEDU, where we have trained over 600 small businesses during this physical, fiscal year. And, Mr. Speaker, we did this by focusing on developing financial literacy. We did this through a number of virtual workshops and seminars. We had sessions in business model workshop, introduction to financials, the small business tax filing workshop, for example. Mr. Speaker, SEDU has been working to foster an understanding of the fundamentals of business for persons seeking to start a business through the Business Startup Essential Workshop, 
as well as the design thinking to develop a business idea workshop, Mrs. Speaker. The unit also held a train the trainer workshop in conjunction with the Taiwanese International Cooperation Taiwanese and Development Taiwanese Fund, the ICDF, aimed at building capacity to develop entrepreneurs <laughs> in the area of e-commerce and marketing strategy, for instance. Mr. Speaker, I want to pause at this moment to thank the government and people of Taiwan through Ambassador Peter Chen for the cooperation and support provided to my ministry and to the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, we embarked on a sensitization program and we call that a business forum drive throughout various communities in 2022. This was hosted, and we did this in collaboration with other government ministries, St. Lucia Development Bank, Export St. Lucia, the Bureau of Standards, Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of Agriculture. We came together as one government, and we had the individual parliamentary representatives had to host us, and we went around, and I think we had about seven constituencies so far, with the Soufre, Grosile, Castries East, Babono, Suezel, Castries Southeast, and I did a short session at Beaufort North between May 2022 and March 2023. This drive focused on the support services and programs offered on island by our government, Mr. Speaker. And so far, approximately 300 small businesses have participated to date, Mr. Speaker. We intend to continue um, these sessions, Mr. Speaker, and as far as my information goes, um, next in line is the constituency of Miku North and the constituency of Miku South. Two constituencies are in line um, to follow, Mr. Speaker. But my ministry, we are available with all the other constituencies to ensure that every community understands this program, Mr. Speaker. The third program we got into was the SBDC Youth Entrepreneurs in Action, Mr. Speaker. And in August last year, 2022, um, our small business unit worked with the Ministry of Education and the, fourth, the students of the fourth and fifth forms we had 40 students, Mr. Speaker, that were assigned to our small enterprises. And there was an exchange of experiences. And I am extremely pleased that we are going to have a second cohort this year. And the Minister for Finance has allocated some $65,000, Mr. Speaker, to this program. On the commerce and industry, again, Mr. Speaker, which represents a second tier of support provided by my ministry, this department, has, is, which caters to sectoral development across our business community, has been given an allocation of $236,300 to implement its ongoing projects and programs in the coming year. And Mr. Speaker, that flagship program for commercial industry is the Digital Enhancement Program, Mr. Speaker. And this program will be launched, I think, tomorrow morning, Mr. Speaker. And what is in this program? This program, Mr. Speaker, is funded, is getting support from the Organization of American States, and it is to support St. Lucia to shift to the digital economy. The project, the, ex, the project is encouraging persons to embrace the e-commerce platforms in St. Lucia and to facilitate the onboarding and regular use of these platforms for our private sector 
and in particular, our small businesses. Mr. Speaker, this symposium is just the first step in this government's march towards incorporating e-commerce and the wider digital technology into our private sector. As the project moves forward, we will also be supporting the local platforms and the MSMEs in introducing this means of transacting business to the St. Lucian consumer, allowing the plumber from Sufra to be online and allowing the business houses in Grosile and the small producer in Suezel to complete a digital transaction and deliver the goods into Babono. So Mr. Speaker, to further advance this project in the coming financial year, an amount of EC $136,190 has been allocated, which includes $90,833, which is the OES grant, and $46,357 in bonds as government counterpart contribution, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the next program and project that we are working on at the Ministry is our Love St. Lucia campaign, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have a budget this year of $100,000 for this campaign, Mr. Speaker. And I believe that as a government, we must lead by example, Mr. Speaker. And when we thought of the expenditure of central government, we felt it was important that central government and the procurement officers in central government, we felt it was important for them to know what was produced locally and for them to have understood that the issue of quality was not in question and that they had to make a concerted effort to support local industry. So that is what is behind the Love St. Lucia campaign, Mr. Speaker. So what did we do at the ministry? We embarked on a training workshop and later a symposium that sought to bring stakeholders together, private sector suppliers of goods and services, and public sector purchasing officers and decision makers. The message at this event, Mr. Speaker, was clear and is one I wish to reiterate here today to public officials and to consuming public. And that is that St. Lucia produces a wide range of quality goods and services that meet national and international standards. Our manufacturers and service providers across the country are not asking consumers or the government to lower the standards or sacrifice performance for the sake of buying local. Rather, they want to show that they can and will compete with imports. All they ask is that we break the stigma that foreign goods are better and urge that the buying public also consider the value proposition as captured in the goods and services they offer. You will be pleasantly surprised and be satisfied. Mr. Speaker, within our budget, I am pleased that an important intervention which we have, which is the annual St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show, which we've had for several years and which requires support for expansion. I noted that we receive an additional $20,000 to expand this program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the past, the Ministry of Commerce has gone out to augment its efforts at showcasing new and upcoming enterprise entrepreneurs while also supporting the bigger names under our purview. Along with our export promotion agency, Export St. Lucia, we, we introduce novel and additional initiatives 
to provide support to our MSME sector, including our first annual La Place Noel, which featured a Christmas film exhibition. And there we had over 30 participants, Mr. Speaker. This was similarly, we had another initiative during independence, which was our Independence Expo, which took place in downtown Castries. And there we had about 70 business houses participating. And there I, we did this with the support of Ministry of Tourism and Events in Russia. And again, Mr. Speaker, this is all in our effort to support local enterprise and our small businesses. Mr. Speaker, on our, our consumer affairs, we have, as I mentioned earlier, the issue of inflation. And I want to point out that with the support of our Honorable Prime Minister, in an effort to reduce or to reduce the impact of rising prices, especially in the first half of the fiscal year 2022-23, as a government to remove the custom service charge of 6% on the importation of all non-fuel price control goods, with the exception of, of bread, bulk rice, sugar, and flour, because these items were already subsidized. Mr. Speaker, this came at a cost of 3.23 million in revenue forgone by this government, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, we did not stop there. We went further to ensure that the price of rice, flour, and sugar remain unchanged despite significant increases in the contract price of these items. And I'll give some examples. The price of rice in 2021-22 was $87 a bag. In 22-23, it rose to $97, an increase of 11.75%. White flour was $99 in 2021-22, and it rose to $144 in the year 2022-23, Mr. Speaker a 45% increase. Brown sugar, 21-22, was $73 a bag, Mr. Speaker. And for 22-23, it was at $92.71, an increase of $26, and an increase of 26%, Mr. Speaker. With all these increases, Mr. Speaker, our government, ensured that the price to the consumer remained the same. This cost our government in subsidies a whopping $14.2 million, Mr. Speaker, for the year in question. So, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of John Public, I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for ensuring that as a government, we took all steps to ensure that St. Lucians continue to have bread on the table, Mr. Speaker. And that is an example. While the price of flour was $99, in May, in May 2022, we sold a bag of flour to the baker at, 14, at $85. So it was, there was a $14 subsidy in May 2022. With an increase, when the bakers were threatening to increase the price of bread in June 2022, Mr. Speaker, we sat with them and pleaded with them. And for the month of June, Mr. Speaker, while the government purchased a bag of flour for $99, we sold it to the bakers 
at $35, Mr. Speaker. So for each bag of flour to the month of June, the government subsidized each bag of flour by $64, Mr. Speaker. Between June to July to September 2022, the government purchased a bag of flour for $144, Mr. Speaker, and sold it to the baker at $60. The government subsidized a bag of flour by $84, Mr. Speaker. $84, Mr. Speaker. And in October, in October 2022 to December 2022, the government purchased a bag of flour for $144 and sold it to the baker at $50. So between October to December, the government subsidized each bag of flour by $94, Mr. Speaker. By $94, Mr. Speaker. It is important, it is important, very important that we repeat, it is very important that we repeat and remind St. Lucians that this is a government, this is a government that have put the people first. So, Mr. Speaker, The subsidy between April and December was $5.4 million, Mr. Speaker. So, uh -uh, uh -uh. Mr. Speaker, but you know as a government, we cannot continue, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Prime Minister for including in this year's um, estimate and expenditure a provision of $1 million to subsidize flowers. But based on the exercise that we have done, it appears that if all things, if all things remain the same, if nothing changing, that subsidy might be $3.5 million, Mr. Speaker. So in the area of our cooperatives, Mr. Speaker, this is, this is a, a, a section of, that requires quite a bit of work, the cooperative movement. In the cooperative movement, we have financial and non-financial cooperatives. For the non-financial cooperatives, we focus a bit on the Fisher cooperatives and with the help of the Ministry of Infrastructure, we have performed infrastructural and electrical assessment on eight of the Fisher cooperatives. Um, I want to thank the minister and, and his staff for that support. And Mr. Speaker, we are now through the, an allocation of $275,000, focusing on three Fisher cooperatives at the moment. Denry Fisher Cooperative, Soufre, and Ansari. We are hoping to get additional funding to focus on the other five Fisher Cooperatives, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our financial cooperatives, which are the credit unions, are doing well, but I want to inform the League and the members of the cooperative unions that the draft legislation, we are working on the draft legislation, and I want to thank the AG and his staff for his support in that area, Mr. Speaker. Under the area of cannabis, Mr. Speaker, we've done quite a bit, but I want to report that for the year 2021-22, we had an allocation of $120,000. And for 2022-23, we have an allocation of $500,000, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, the task force created under this administration over the last year, ably assisted by stakeholders and engaged consultants, uh, left no stone unturned and has now presented a draft um, control substance bill, Mr. Speaker. We have this document now, and I, I want to ensure the general public, through you, Mr. Speaker, that um, the next two months we will engage key stakeholders before we come to this honorable house with this bill, Mr. Speaker. For the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Mr. Speaker, For the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Mr. Speaker, with a budget of $981,000, the Bureau has a mission to strengthen the national quality infrastructure in order to contribute to the advancement of the national economy, support sustainable development, promote health and safety of consumers, and protect the environment and to facilitate trade, Mr. Speaker. The work of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards is critical if we are to increase our exports, Mr. Speaker. Export St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, I move to provide an update on the work of Export St. Lucia. In our manifesto, we pledge to establish export market development assistance programs through the provision of technical assistance to develop export marketing strategies for our small businesses, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, following on a contraction of 14.7% in 2020, that is for exports, I'm pleased to report that export grew by 13.4 million in 2021 and by 4.8 million in 2022. Likewise, Mr. Speaker, available data on the manufacturing sector shows pronounced increases in the output of all subsectors. Mr. Speaker, this, this did not happen by accident, but by deliberate effort to increase both volume and value of our island's exports. In support of this trend, Mr. Speaker, Export St. Lucia embarked on a number of new initiatives and projects during the year in review. This included the Export the Runway, Taste of St. Lucia Store at Point Seraphine, and the CDB Pack House Project. And this Pack House Project, Mr. Speaker, impacts the agricultural sector. Um, we have quite a few success stories from the work of Export St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, and this augurs well for our product development, marketing, and export potential going forward. So, Mr. Speaker, having provided you with this synopsis of the work of my ministry and its constituent parts over the last fiscal year, and an indication of what we plan to do this coming year, I will now try to focus on my constituency, Mr. Speaker. How much time do I have, Mr. Speaker? Oh, I have not used much time. What's that? I have 20? Okay, good. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'll focus on what we have achieved and then focus on what we project, Mr. Speaker. Um, for my constituency, in addition to, to relying on central government, Mr. Speaker, we try to go outside and see how we could try to help ourselves. And we had what we call our funders forum, Mr. Speaker. But firstly, I want to say what we have achieved under our CDP program, Mr. Speaker. 
Uh, and I'm seeing the CDP on the head 56. But what we have achieved with our million dollars, Mr. Speaker, we have, we have, we, w we end up with some 58 contracts, Mr. Speaker. 30 of these contracts were completed during the, up to, up to um, March this year. And we have 28 projects ongoing, Mr. Speaker. Um, but I want to summarize the work that we have done under the CTP, Mr. Speaker. We've done significant drainage work in Fauchet Jacques in particular, because Fauchet Jacques has a water problem, especially during the rainy season, that can cause significant um, problems for not only Fauchet Jacques, but Soufren in particular. So between Pont Saint Jacques and Mini, we've done quite a bit of what I would call work that is the responsibility of my colleague, Minister, uh, Minister for Infrastructure. We focus quite a bit as well, Mr. Speaker, on safety and determine that we are going to paint all our speed bumps around the constituency. We, again, partnered with infrastructure and presented, we went into um, the installation of guardrails. Um, both, um, we've done that in the Fonchejac region in particular, where we had a lot of um, slopes and areas that we felt was unsafe. And we continue that program and part of that will be the Castry Sufra Road as well. Under our CDP as well, Mr. Speaker, we started the Bouton Community Center, Mr. Speaker, and from all indications, that is about 85% complete, Mr. Speaker. We've renovated a foot bridge which connects the new development area with the Wingsville area, Mr. Speaker. This bridge was originally in plywood and it posed significant problems to our school children. It was a threat and under the CDP we were able to do this. As well under the CDP program, um, we were able to go out to start work. We are going to start work on the Fort Bernier Park, Mr. Speaker. So for CTP, I am extremely pleased with the work that we are doing with these funds. We are also going to do some remedial work on the Fongen Lib Road, Mr. Speaker, provide certain drainage, um, some sidewalk for Fon Bernier. We'll do some drainage work in new development as well as Barons Drive, Mr. Speaker. So that is under the CDP. Some of the other works we are doing, Mr. Speaker, under the social, what I would call that social infrastructure, we have four projects going. Lenny Hills Park, and we're trying to get some funding from the Tourism Enhancement Fund. The Soufre Streetscape, again on the Tourism Enhancement Fund, Mr. Speaker. The New Development Park, and that we are working together with one of the hotels, and that is Sugar Beach, to try to put that together. And the Fort Bernier Park, as I said, will be under the CDP project, Mr. Speaker. Under the um, economic infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, we are looking at the development of the Sufra waterfront under the GPH project, Mr. Speaker. And I was particularly pleased with the public consultation on that project. Mr. Speaker, on the physical infrastructure, and with the help of the National Lottery and the Ministry for Youth and Sports, we worked on the cricket pitches because, as you know, now Sufre does not have a cricket ground. So we are trying to put in the practice pitch for our cricketers. Mr. Speaker, we have a BPO operation in Soufre, yet our persons 
have difficulty getting employment. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to train our young people to prepare them for the job market. So there's a training component. On the social development, Mr. Speaker, we have a project for free public Wi-Fi across the constituency, which is going to impact Zeno, Wavinclair, St. Philip, Mini, Belvide, Mocha, Fonchalit, Barons Drive, Market Road, Victoria Road, Wingsville. And Mr. Speaker, we are getting support under the Universal Service Fund of the National Telecommunication Regulatory Commission, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Sufre under the area of education, um, we had some poor performances, and after consultation with the schools, we have implemented an after-school program, and that is funded by the Sufre Regional Development Foundation, and some 76 children are receiving after-school care classes, including meals, before they go to their homes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have quite a bit of homeless people in Sufre, and we're trying to prepare and construct a home for the elderly and the homeless, Mr. Speaker. And I want to take this moment to thank the Dibule family for donating the land for this. And I am extremely happy when I look at the, the head on the equity head 51 to try to get some funding for that project. Mr. Speaker, under our anti-harassment program, again, we are working with the SSDF, who is assisting us with a social survey to see how we can intervene, especially for our young boys, Mr. Speaker. In the area of food security, Mr. Speaker, we have a program, Greenhouse Repair, um, in the Sufre schools, Mr. Speaker, and there we are searching for a sponsor, and I am extremely pleased under the head for agriculture, head 41, Mr. Speaker, that I can see us getting some support for our school program. We are also putting in a program, what we call a backyard gardening pro project, Mr. Speaker, for the community, and that is to increase food production, food security, and reliance for some 50 households as a pilot project. And there we are getting some support from WUSC, which is a Canadian institution, Mr. Speaker. On the social protection, on the agriculture, Mr. Speaker, um, we went in and we desealed what you call a, a lake in the Fonchejac region, and that was to minimize flooding and to facilitate agriculture. And this project was successfully completed, Mr. Speaker. That was funded under the CDP program. Another CDP program is the provision of fertilizer to assist our farmers, and I await um, my colleague, Minister for Agriculture, so we can make this distribution. I also want to thank the Minister for Agriculture for the funds provided to our fishers. Um, Mr. Speaker, again on the agriculture, our Bellevue Farmers Cooperative, which is a very critical institution for us. We have come in with CDP funds, support from Export St. Lucia, and, ex and support from um, World University of Canada. And we've done the following. Installation of greenhouses, assistance with seedlings, renovation of the office structure, and the construction and renovation of a chill room. The, all of this is to um, increase the shelf life of the products that our farmers are selling and to increase the market for our farmers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the education, we have three projects. One of them is the renovation of the science lab at the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School. And this was done with funding from the Sufre Regional Development Foundation. Um, Mr. Speaker, again, we had 
a lot of um, pushback from the teachers of the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School concerning um, the condition of the school. And I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his support in allowing us, giving us the funding to construct um, a structure to accommodate three classrooms within the SCSS, Mr. Speaker. For the Sufra Primary School on the BNTF 10, Mr. Speaker, um, there is a renovation of that school, a block in that school, and I have been informed that the tender documents are out for that, Mr. Speaker. So these are some of the things that we have done, Mr. Speaker. And as I look quickly under the, the um, 2023 estimates, Mr. Speaker, I want to look on head 41, Ministry of Agriculture, project 30-30322, and that is building resilience for adaptation to climate change and climate vulnerability. I see some $26.6 million there, Mr. Speaker. There's the purchase of water pumps, tillers, farm equipment. And I know my farmers, particularly my farmers from Fonchajac, is going to welcome this particular project, Mr. Speaker. On the project 90265, expansion of food crops. Again, Mr. Speaker, under the eight crop program, training of farmers and supply of inputs is another project that the, the farmers of Sufre would welcome. Again, for the Ministry of Agriculture, the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project is another project that we would welcome in the Sufre area, and especially the replanting of 78 acres of cocoa, Mr. Speaker. Again, on the agriculture, we have a project for $450,000 from the Taiwanese, enhancing farm mechanization. And that is one that our farmers have been calling for. So I am extremely happy with my Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Speaker, and the Minister of Finance. On the head 43, Mr. Speaker, infrastructure, I see some $3 million for road maintenance. We all know it is not enough, but I know that is what we can do for the moment. Um, so I welcome it. I also see a $1.6 million there for the road caretaker program. And that is critical to keeping our surroundings, our island clean. And I know our caretakers would be happy. But Mr. Mr. Speaker, the project that excites me a lot is Project 0317, Renewable Energy Sector Development Project, some $58 million, Mr. Speaker, and that's the geothermal exploration drilling in Belle Plaine, Fonchejac, and Salty Boost, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this project has significant impact not only for the residents of Sufre in terms of work and everything else, but as also as the minister responsible for commerce, I am aware that the business community is screaming for alternative energy. And this has the impact, will have the impact, if successful, to increase St. Lucia's competitiveness, especially our manufacturing sector, to, re to reduce the cost of energy and by extension, improve economic growth. So I really pray for the success of this project, Mr. Speaker. Under the Ministry of Tourism, Mrs. Mrs. Speaker, Project 0045, Community Tourism, some $34 million in there, Mr. Speaker. And I'm already looking for my Sufre Streetscape program as one, as one of the projects that is going there, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> yeah? My foundation. I'm closing Sufre. When I close Sufre, that is when you are going to see. On the head 55, Mr. Speaker, Ministry of Housing, um, the, the project of the National Housing and Assistance Program, Mr. Speaker, this is a critical project for us. And I'm really hoping, Mr. Minister, that this year Sufre will have his, receive his fair share. So I'm looking forward to being 
the next month or so that I'm coming with <laughs> to ensure that we get our fair share, Mrs. Speaker. On the head 51, equity, Mrs. Speaker, project 0059, the home care program. Member for Sufra, you have five minutes left. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. Under that program of 8.2 million, Mrs. Speaker, this is a program very close to my heart because we are now, that program allows us as a government to take care of our elderly. It is a serious program and I believe there is room for proper training of the workers there so that they too can, can move on to do other things. On the head 52 Ministry of Education, Mr. Speaker, of 217 million, I just want I'm looking at my minister here, Mr. Speaker, but Sufra Comprehensive Secondary School. I am placing this on, I am pleading, get my teachers to be happier than they are. So, Mr. Minister, please. On the head 54, youth development, um, the Rehabilit Project 0408. Rehabilitation of sports facilities. I look forward to working with the minister to improve the Zeno um, open space, Mr. Speaker. This is critical for us. So, Mr. Speaker, when I look at this estimate before us, I believe it reflects a government that has Sat, we've sat together with our limited resources and tried to address the needs of the people. We have, especially Mr. Speaker, for me, the subsidies we are able to provide day in, day out, not only for in the area of flour, but more so in the area of cooking gas for especially our single mothers, and to remind them that each time they go out and buy a tank of a 20-pound um, cylinder of gas, that this government is subsidizing it by $20. That is something we have to remind them of every day, Mr. Speaker. So as we look around and we continue to work, as we continue to work for the people. We gave them a commitment that we are going to put the people first and we continue to do so. So I want to express profound gratitude, Mr. Speaker, to several persons. To my constituent of Fonchon Jacques for their enduring support and confidence in me and for what we can do together. Our foot soldiers, the councillors, the chairman, board, and staff of the Sufra Regional Development Foundation. Um, the, I want to thank my permanent secretary and my staff in the various departments, as well as the associated specialized agencies. Um, Slisba, Export St. Lucia, Free Zone, Bureau of Standards. When I think of um, Chamber of Commerce, St. Lucia Manufacturers Association, the Bakers Association, National Consumers Association, Fashion Council. I'm working with all these bodies, Mrs. Speaker, and I really want to say thank you. My profound gratitude for the constructive engagements with us throughout the year in review. I'm indeed encouraged by the successes that we have recorded thus far, some of which I have mentioned earlier. I want to thank my people of Sufre for working together as we continue to transform Soufre Fonch Jacques. I was told they had meetings there, but no meetings can take back this ground. No meetings. No meetings. No meetings in Fonch Jacques can take back. No meetings can take back this ground. Go there. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to build 
a more vibrant, competitive, and resilient commercial sector in St. Lucia. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to end. I want to thank the Almighty for his many graces and blessings as he continues to protect this beautiful country of ours. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let him go. Let him go and have meetings. Let him go and have meetings up there. <laughs>